This early afternoon, I thought I'd do a, a quick video on um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, the first one is, uh, it's uh, again on the 790 radio alarm saw, but this would apply to any radio alarm saw. When you, uh, let me see if I can zoom in on that so you can see it a little better. Uh, why isn't it zooming? Going the wrong way. There we go. Uh, the, when I was adjusting the arm perpendicular to the fence, I had uh, already installed my sacrificial top. So by the time I got this thing adjusted to 90 degrees, the kerf in my table was pretty wide. Uh, actually, on this end, it's about, it was about, oh, three-eighths, and this end about a quarter. So what happens is that you get a nice clean cut on the top because the teeth are rotating in this way. And so you get a nice clean cut uh, with that Freud LU83. Uh, but the bottom, you get tear out because it's unsupported. So I was going to change the top. I thought, man, maybe there's a better way. Well, I found a better way. This is, this was recommended on one of the videos that Alan Little does. I think it's called Ask the Woodman. And the guy's a genius. I mean, there isn't anything he can't build. Um, it's a two-part epoxy called PC7. Uh, he used it uh, to put together uh, a, a, a really beautiful door uh, that he'd made out of, uh, 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 I think it was uh, uh, big, thick uh, uh, mahogany. It's a huge, beautiful door. It's been a lot, of, you know, Alan Little, if you've ever watched his videos, uh, he spends uh, a lot of time doing everything just exactly perfectly. Well, if he, like he explained in the video, if he'd have used uh, white glue, yeah, it would have been just as strong, but he would have had to cut his mortises and tenons way more accurately than he does when he uses the epoxy. Uh, Epoxy doesn't shrink. It's a gap filler, uh, and it is extremely weather resistant and extremely strong. Plus, it has an hour of work time. Which, you're, when you're assembling something complicated like a door uh, with lots of styles and rails and, and mullions in the middle and different things like that, you got to get it all together at once so you can square it up. If there's any square enough to do, which with Alan Little, the way he cuts things, there's no square enough to do. The thing squares itself practically. But um, you got an hour. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty important. So anyway, I bought, I bought some PC7, and uh, I fixed that crack, uh, that kerf in my table saw uh, very nicely. And then I ran... The uh, let me see that when you when you zoom, it really moves things around quickly. So um, uh, this kerf, I, I I put it in yesterday afternoon late, maybe six o'clock, and then and then I came out here this morning about at ten or eleven, and sanded this off, and ran the kerf through it. That it, I mean it ran through. I mean it's it's perfect, uh, and none of it chipped out. It made a perfect saw line or, or kerf across there that is the exact width of my blade with support on both sides, uh, the off cut and the piece that, you know, that you're, you're keeping or the piece you're keeping in the off cut, however you're doing it. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I, you know, I haven't cut a board with it, but I know uh, perfectly well uh, what the results are going to be. Where's a, let me see if I can find a piece of plywood. I, I've got a small piece of plywood here. Uh, that I will run the saw across, and then we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the we'll look at the cut. Oh my gosh! Uh, 
well, let's see, maybe I should do it from here, because uh, that's focusing on, on that pretty well. But this is the bottom, and there is no chip out. Oh my gosh, if there is, it's very tiny. And the top, of course, because the blade is coming in uh, from the top, uh, there's absolutely no chip out in the top, but I haven't had that problem. I've only had chip out in the bottom, and now that is, oh gosh, 99.9% uh, no chip. Uh, very, very slight chipping on it. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, I think that the PC7 was a success. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't have to change this table as often as I thought. So, uh, probably never, maybe. So, what, what else have I been doing? Well, the other thing I've been doing is I sold the, uh, the uh, Delta Super 990, and that freed up some more space in here. So, I moved this banquet table out here. It's 30 inches by 72. This is not a permanent work table. I moved it out here, and I'm gonna keep it out here for a week or so uh, before I build my uh, work bench slash assembly table. Uh, it's gonna be kind of a combination thing. But I wanted to see if I could live with something this big, or if I need to make it narrower, uh, or uh, shorter, or both shorter and narrower. Uh, or if I can live, I'd love to be able to live with a 30 inch by 72. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, there'll be even more space when I get rid of this. Um, so uh, things are shaping up. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting to where uh, I've got uh, more space in this small shop than uh, I imagined. It looks like uh, I may be able to keep, uh, set up this way, I may be able to keep my little uh, Rockwell Delta table saw, which uh, I'd like to keep. It's got the jointer on it, and uh, it'd just be handy. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention the other day, uh, when, I, when I talked about the new router table, uh, or stand for the router table, is this table uh, is the same height as the uh, same height as my table saw, which when I'm doing rips, I can open the door, I can rip long things, and also when, I, when I'm doing cutoffs, uh, this, this is the same height as this. It makes for a really nice um, uh, in-feed table for doing cutoffs and an outfit table for doing in-rips. So uh, uh, yeah, all things, I'm, I'm getting pretty happy and excited about my new shop or my little shop and, and uh, getting things. Uh, organized in such a way that uh, uh, it makes more sense and it's easier to get around in. So I hope this video was, uh, uh, if not informative, at least interesting. Thank you for watching.